Once again, folks, Dan Harris. God, I don't sing or play the guitar because I'm really bad for it. <laughs> you know, the Jack Earp Foundation was really put in place to continue the work of educating folks outside of the cannabis and hemp industry um, so we can dispel the myths and outright lies regarding cannabis and hemp. And that's what's so important about history, is because the people that create uh, the text for our books for learning in school, they have the, oppor they have the opportunity to really uh, engage us in a way that, that tells a story about who we are, what we stood for, how we got here. And it's through them that create the textbooks that tell us about us. The problem with that is when important information is taken out of our educational curriculum, it changes the perception of how we live, how we represent ourselves, how we utilize the things that we have access to to make our lives better, not just in America, not just in South America, but uh, globally speaking. So it's very odd that across the way from here, there's a U.S. or foreign coin uh, sales and commerce going on. And most people, including me, and although my father taught me a great, bit, a great deal about hemp and cannabis as I was growing up, as he was writing the book, The Emperor, and as many times as I read The Emperor, one of the things that uh, I don't remember seeing in it um, was the story of our currency. Now, the U.S. holds our currency up to represent who we are. It describes who we are as a nation, as a people. And in doing so, they put images on the, our currency that depicts our founding fathers, the things that stand for what American beliefs are, whether it's the Lincoln Memorial or the Washington Monument or the State Capitol, you know, the White House. It, it tells a story about us and the things that were important to us that created why we fight so hard for one another, why we fight so hard for the beliefs and developments in this country and, and its future. So oddly enough, in 1914, the US, the U.S. government, on the back of their $10 note, here in the United States, depicts hemp farming in America. Now, we put our founding fathers, because they represent who we are, we put buildings and, and monuments that depict the, our, our love and our belief in this country. So why is it that something of this importance that is put on our currency that we all touch and, and deal with every day, all of this image has been removed from subsequent printings, but why was it so important for this crop to be depicted on a currency that represents us as Americans, us as a culture? These are the things that we need to, at this point, look back into our books that were pre-1920s, uh, in order to find out its truth, because post that, it's been removed from our history. The Emperor wears no clothes, the book my father wrote, trying to expose as much of this information that was buried and uh, almost eliminated from our understanding as a culture. So I encourage all of you, when the US government, prior to what I think is quite corrupt, for the last many years, that there was a time that the things that we did, the things that our government did, were because we had a soul that, that wanted to make us better, wanted to make how we live better, and how we would not just survive the future, but thrive in it. Hemp is that possibility for us. As long as we continue to educate ourselves, look for the information that has been removed from our understanding, and, and really take a new look uh, on how we perceive what we have the ability to do today, 
uncover the technologies and processes that will help us prosper in the future and create a better existence, not just for us, but for all mankind. So please, seek the information, read as much as you can, and uh, educate your neighbors. God bless you all. Next up, uh, it's not on the program guide, but we do have a special guest who comes from a lineage that's truly important to where we are today with this plant. A lot of the things that you hear about, 25,000 uses, 50,000 uses, originated in a book called The Emperor Wears No Clothes, or The Emperor Wears No Clothes. <laughs> There used to be a store in Fort Collins, Colorado called The Hipper Wears No Clothes, and that's where I first got introduced to Jack Hare. And we're fortunate today to have his son, Dan Hare, to talk about the Hare Foundation and what they've got planned coming up over the course of the next several years. So, Dan? That's the girls. Oh, sorry. I don't know these things. <laughs> We're figuring out this lay situation here. 